Today I would like to tell you a bit about engine air intake and exactly about its anti-ice protection. So let's take a look at it. So what is air intake good for? Basically it's aerodynamical component and it is here to efficiently turn air towards fan blades and compressor. And uh, one of the biggest enemies of the air intake is ice buildup. Because if you have uneven buildup of the ice, it distracts the airflow. And that's why we need to fight against it somehow. And for that, we are using engine anti-ice system. So we are taking hot air from the high pressure compressor and we lead it inside of the engine air intake. And uh, then once it's circle inside, it is sent overboard to this exhaust. And the air is let in by anti-ice valve, which we can find over here. I will show you later on. Uh, why do we need to have anti-ice valve? Why we just can let the air get in all the time? Reason is very simple. Every air which is dragged from the compressor reduce its efficiency. We basically have less uh, air for combustion process, which means that we need to increase the power, which means the higher consumption. And I guess the easiest way how to prove this to you is on example. Here we have both engines on idle and once we switch on engine anti-ice, valve will open and it will let bleed air enter into the air intake. And by this huge demand, engine will raise the parameters to compensate this air loss. And we are only on idle, but fuel consumption raise from 60 to 80 kilograms per hour. And that's a huge difference. Okay, that was short example, now we can go back outside. So now we know why we have actually anti-ice valve on the engine. And now I'll try to show you how it works, from where the air is dragged and how to install it. So let's take a look at it. Let's take a closer look on the anti s valve itself. So the control box or control section is up here. It is controlled by electricity and operate thanks to air. Uh, the air, uh, I will show you where the control air is coming from. This end leads inside of the intake, but the other one goes behind of the EEC. We have a control line behind, and this is the duct which leads the air for the anti air valve. It comes to you in the hot section, uh, in the core section, and here is our line which leads to fifth stage of the high pressure compressor. So from the fifth stage of the high pressure compressor, we are taking the air for heating the intake and the control pressure comes from ninth stage of the high pressure compressor. Basically, this duct leads to a high pressure a bleed valve. This, that's the, exactly the place from, the, from where the air is coming from. And as well, yeah, you can see the connections to 9th stage and as well, a bit above, that also goes to 9th stage. So the air is coming from the multiple places and then it leads to the uh, aircraft systems. And since so. you know where the bleeder is coming from, now we can take a look how to remove anti as well. And we need to start by removing of the connector. Good. Okay, it's a connector. After that, I'll remove the hose, which uh, brings the control pressure to the valve. Yes, and now two clamps. Just hold it on place. A few moments later. One. 
and all that's remaining is the clamp on the aft section. Yes, it's ours. And here are two rings. One and the other one. Uh, quite important thing to show is this pin over here. Uh, that's lining pin and it sits in this groove one of these two that's for it so you will always install it in the correct position now we can plug it and continue with other work okay it's time to install the anti-s valve uh, important is to know the aero side which way you need to flow and yep we have uh, seals, one, the other one, and we can start to connect it. First, we'll install it on the intake. Everything should fit. And now the last one. And as I mentioned during removal, the aligning bit need to fit exactly in the slot of the valve, which I of course need to double check. Since it sits on the place and it looks like that sense line we're gonna fit, uh, we can try to install it. Sorry for the noise. Connector will sit. Yes, like this. Good. So now we know that connector and muscle pressure will be in the correct position so we can tie the clamps. Now forward. Okay, that's aft. Now forward. Good. It was the first one. Now lightly tap with a Clamps are gonna have a chance to sit correctly. with the sense line again third volume
great. So, that's the sense line. No. Connector. Connector pliers. Finally. Once they start to slip, you know that connector is tight, so... Great! Red line is gone, which means that it is uh, correctly tight. No, it's not touching anything, we have space behind. Clamps are torqued. Yeah, so uh, we can apply a developer on it, and later on we can test it. And for lead check, we need to apply the developer, so whenever, uh, when we perform the run-up, we will see that if there is any sort of leak. So if something, if you will see like uh, stain, missing, missing uh, developer, missing this, this powder will be missing. Uh, that is basically a sign that you have a leak, so hopefully there will be nothing. Now we need to let it dry and we can uh, close the, uh, the call. Anti-S valve can be also deactivated either in open position or closed position. Here you can see indication, now it is in the closed position. Uh, depends of uh, the conditions in which you will gonna fly you can deactivate it either in close or in open position so uh, then we'll put it there we'll remove the pin we'll install it in the lock position and we'll lock wire it there and the procedure for test and leak check I already showed you before we need to switch on the engine and once they are stabilized we'll switch on engine anti-ice momentarily you get a fault message that means that wealth is in transit the parameters will raise because engine try to compensate higher demand of the air and once we reach five minutes we will switch off this valve and we can switch on the engine then all what's remaining is just open the fan codes and inspect the valve for the leaks that's all about engine and as well if you have any questions please write them down in the comments below as always i would like to ask you don't use this as a replacement for maintenance manual but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. That's uh, all from my side. My name is Tomasz, do you maintenance with Zeto, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.